stood a big old tree on the banks of the river Ganga. In the hollow trunk of that tree there lived a vulture. He was old and blind, and so he never left his hollow. Many other birds also lived in that tree. Every morning, when these birds went in search of food, the vulture looked after their fledglings, and in return the birds shared their food with him. In this way, the old vulture passed his days in peace. One day, a big cat came to that tree. He looked around carefully. When the birds go out in search of food, their fledglings are left behind in their nests, thought the cat. When the fledglings saw the cat, they began to twitter noisily. When the vulture heard their loud twitter, he said to himself, The fledglings sound scared and so they are twittering loudly. I am sure someone has come to eat them up. Who is it? screamed the vulture loudly. On seeing the vulture, the cat was frightened at first. But then he thought, It is no use being scared. Right now, I must use my brains instead of brawn. He then said to the vulture, It's me, the cat. I have come here as your guest. Go away from here, screamed the vulture. If you don't leave right now, I will kill you. Listen to me, please, said the cat, pretending to plead. After listening to my story, if you feel like killing me, you can do so. All right, said the vulture, calming down a little. Tell me quickly. The cat said, Every day I bathe in the river Ganga and worship the Almighty. I overheard the birds saying that you possess a lot of knowledge about religion. Therefore, I have come here to enlighten myself in your company. The vulture said, Cats love flesh. Besides, there are many fledglings in this tree, and so I cannot trust you. The cat bowed to the vulture and said, O oh, learned vulture, I have spent my life piously. I am not attached to worldly things. I believe in non-violence. Why would I commit a sin by killing the fledglings? The cat looked at the vulture, who was listening to him attentively. He then continued, saying, When an animal eats the flesh of another animal, he enjoys himself. But the other animal dies a painful death. One can satisfy one's hunger by eating fruits. Why should one resort to unnecessary violence and commit a sin for the sake of filling one's stomach? The vulture was impressed by the cat's noble thoughts. It was then that the cat also realised that the vulture was totally blind. The cat had already won the old vulture's confidence. Soon he began to live in the hollow trunk of the tree. Every morning, when the birds went out in search of food, the cat would climb up the tree and catch some fledglings. He would then return to the hollow and eat them up quietly. All the birds were grief-stricken. Those who had lost their fledglings cried inconsolably. The birds wondered, Who kills our fledglings every day? We must find out the culprit and punish him. Meanwhile, as soon as the cat got a chance, he fled from there. As the birds were looking around for some clues to catch the culprit, they saw the bones and feathers of their fledglings in the hollow trunk of the tree. Oh, the vulture has been killing and eating up our fledglings, said the birds. He has betrayed us. Instead of looking after the fledglings, he has killed them. All the birds at once attacked the vulture and pecked him with their beaks. The old and blind vulture screamed for help, but no one came to his rescue. Writhing in pain, the poor vulture breathed his last. There once lived a majestic elephant in a big forest. He had a long trunk and beautiful white tusks. His ears were very big and his legs were like pillars. He would walk with a slow pace and wander about the forest calmly. Sometimes he would raise his trunk and trumpet loudly. When the foxes saw this majestic elephant, they said, Look at that big elephant! How healthy he looks! If he dies, we can relish his flesh. Besides, we need not worry about food for many months. One of the foxes said, Stop daydreaming! How can a healthy and strong elephant like that one die soon? Another fox said, That elephant is like a big mountain. Even if all of us get together and attack him, he will not die. Hearing this, an old fox said, I can kill the elephant easily. Then why don't you do so? asked a fox. What are you waiting for? How will you kill that big elephant? said another fox. You are so old and weak. The old fox said, You need brains and not brawn to kill the elephant. 
then you must kill the elephant and prove that you are intelligent, said a fox. The old fox vowed, saying, I will not eat food until I have killed the elephant. All the foxes praised the old fox's courage and determination. This old fox will die of starvation, whispered a young fox in another fox's ear. The old fox went to the elephant. He bowed to him and said, Please help us, O master, please help us. The elephant raised his trunk to bless the old fox. What brings you here? he asked. What news have you got? The old fox said politely, I am your humble servant. I have come here on behalf of all the animals of the forest. They are all very unhappy. What is the problem? asked the elephant. The old fox said, We do not have a king, and we cannot live without one. All the animals in the forest wish to make you the king. Are there no lions or tigers in the forest? asked the elephant, a little surprised. The old fox said, Yes, there are, but even they believe that since you are the strongest animal, you must be made the king. They are ready to serve you. The elephant was very happy to hear this. The old fox said, The animals have decided to crown you the king right now, so please come with me. Long live the elephant king, said the old fox as he bowed to the elephant. The elephant raised his trunk with pride and trumpeted. The old fox walked in the front and the elephant walked slowly behind him. The old fox said, Your Majesty, please walk a little faster. We should not miss the auspicious moment. The old fox started walking towards the swampy land. Though the mud on the surface had dried because of the heat, there was deep swamp under it. The fox was aware of it, but his weight was so little that he could easily walk across the dry mud. He was not trapped in the swamp. He then turned around and waited for the elephant. As soon as the elephant put his heavy foot on the dry mud, he got trapped in the swamp. The elephant was so heavy that his own weight pushed him deep down into the swamp. He struggled to come out, but it was all in vain. He began to slide deeper and deeper into the swamp. Hey, fox, cried the elephant. I am stuck in the swamp. Please find a way to help me come out. Aha, so at last he is trapped said the old fox, who was rather pleased. He then said, Look for a strong support to pull yourself out of the swamp. But there is nothing that I can get hold of here, said the elephant. What will I do? Get hold of my tail, said the fox. You wanted to be the king, the elephant king. Now come out of the swamp on your own. The elephant was furious. You sinner, he cried in disgust. You wicked fox! The old fox bowed to the elephant and said, Long live the king! Hail the Elephant King! The elephant could not come out of the swamp. He died of thirst and starvation. Many birds and animals lived on the banks of the river Narmada. A troop of monkeys lived on a mountain near the river. They would chatter merrily, jump in the trees, tease one another, scowl at one another, and enjoy themselves. At the foot of the mountain, there was a tree. Many birds had built their nests in the tree. The monsoon had set in. Suddenly, it began to rain heavily. The monkeys ran to the tree, jumped up and sat quietly on the branches. The birds were also sitting quietly in their nests. They enjoyed the sight of the monkeys drenched in the rain. A miner could not control herself. She said to the monkeys, Why are you sitting so quietly? One of the monkeys scowled at the miner. But the others sat calmly, with their long tails hanging down from the branches. Suddenly, it began to rain very heavily, and there was a hailstorm. The monkeys were now shivering with cold. Their teeth started chattering. A baby monkey, which was clinging to its mother, also began to shiver. Mother monkey said, My baby is shivering. Please help me. Hearing this, a weaver bird said, How can anyone help you in this downpour? You should have thought of all this beforehand. We had built our nests long time back. Look, how comfortable we are in our nest today. The miner agreed with the weaver bird and said, You have two hands to work with. If you had used them to build a shelter for yourselves, you would have been resting in it comfortably. A few monkeys stared angrily at the birds and scowled at them. Some others began to look around, as if searching for a solution to their problem. Suddenly, a monkey spotted some berries lying on the ground. Ah, those appear to be sparks. They might help to keep the baby monkey warm, he thought. 
and jumped down to get the berries. The weaver bird said, Hey, foolish monkey, those are not sparks, they are berries. The monkey was angry. He said, Will you keep quiet? Suddenly, another monkey got an idea. He said, Let us collect some glowworms. They might keep us warm. Hearing this, a baby sparrow was about to say something. But before she could say anything, her mother said, Quiet! You should never advise the monkeys. The baby sparrow kept quiet, but the weaver bird could not control herself. She said, Foolish monkey! How can a glowworm keep you warm? The monkey was furious. He said, Why don't you mind your own business? If you don't stop interfering, I will destroy your nest. Hearing these words, all the birds hid themselves in their nests and began to tremble with fear. But the weaver bird continued to advise the monkey. She said, Anger destroys intelligence. Instead of losing your temper, why don't you go in search of a hollow or a cave to protect yourselves? Before the weaver bird could complete her sentence, the furious monkey jumped up, pulled down the nest and destroyed it. He was so furious that he destroyed all the nests in the tree. The frightened birds flew away. On the banks of a beautiful pond, there stood lush green trees. Many cranes lived in one of these trees. A snake also lived in the hollow trunk of that tree. Every day he would slither up the tree and eat a few baby cranes. As the days passed, the snake became fatter and fatter. One day, the snake ate all the babies of a crane. The crane was grief-stricken. He stood on one foot on the bank of the pond. His eyes were filled with tears. A crab saw the crane crying inconsolably. Friend, he said to the crane, what is the matter? Why are you crying? The poor crane narrated his tragic story to the crab. He then asked the crab, can you think of a way to kill the snake? The crane is our enemy, thought the crab. I must think of a plan, which the crane should approve of immediately. But when he executes that plan, all the cranes also will be destroyed. After thinking for some time, the crab said, I have an idea. What is that? asked the crane enthusiastically. Tell me quickly. The crane had stopped crying now. Well, said the crab, I can tell you only if you promise to execute the plan. The crane could no longer contain his curiosity. He said, Be quick, tell me the plan. I promise to execute it immediately. The sooner the snake dies, the better it is for us. Ah, said the crab, trying to create some suspense. The plan is very simple. It hardly matters, said the crane impatiently. Tell me quickly. The crab said, Friend, scatter some fish from the hole in which the mongoose lives right up to the hollow of the snake. The mongoose, while eating the fish, will reach the snake and kill him. The crane liked the idea very much. He called a meeting of all the cranes and told them about the crab's idea to kill the snake. As was planned, the crane scattered some fish from the hole of the mongoose right up to the hollow of the snake. Now, when the mongoose got the smell of fish, he came out of his hole. Ah, fresh fish, he said, feeling very happy at the sight of plenty of fish. He began to gulp them along the way and soon reached the hollow of the snake. The snake and the mongoose are arch enemies. When the snake and the mongoose saw each other, they could not control their hatred. Soon a violent fight began between the two. At last, the mongoose killed the snake. He then saw the crane sitting on the tree. His mouth started watering. With great speed, he climbed up the tree to catch the cranes. But the cranes flapped their wings and flew away.